Today on The Breakfast, the Central Bank of Nigeria has launched a, a domestic card scheme called Africa. We'll look at what this means for business transactions in Africa's biggest economy. Also on The Breakfast, we'll talk sports on the program this morning with a look at Super Falcon squad for the Revolution Cup in Mexico. The FA Cup match between the Master and his apprentice. I'm sure you get to find out. Plus, a look at the latest from Nigeria's Professional Football League. And in After Press, we bring you in depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines all ahead on the breakfast. Great to be back. It's a beautiful Friday morning, reaching you live from our studios. On Victoria Allen Lagos, my name is Kofi Bartel. And I am Messi Boko. It's good to have you join us this morning. All right, uh, Messi, why are we so cold? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful morning. Yes, of right? course, it's a beautiful morning. Yes, indeed. We, um, we can't ignore the fact that, you know, the queues have not. I was going to ask you about that. Did you see any on your way to work oh, this of morning? Of course. I mean, okay. even before six o'clock, so mm. as early as five. Uh, okay. Sometimes you begin to ask yourself, does it really have to be like this? queues quite lengthy and you know when you have all of this lengthy queues because these filling stations are on the road then they also you know take part of the road and so i mean the roads are not very broad so narrow roads and all of that so yes indeed uh, moving and navigating your way just yeah. you know driving becomes very difficult yes indeed uh, i mean it's sort of same thing as well i mean legal state government uh, through the minister of uh, the commissioner for transportation had some uh things to say about this some time ago uh where they said you know petrol stations in Lagos state can't sell or dispense fuel to the public uh before 9 a.m and after 4 p.m um <laughs> but i mean yeah, that thing held for some time but we've seen that they have had to you know uh, be a bit soft on and relax this thing on on the stations we need to buy a few early and so uh, one major road which i i use to to get to work mercy uh, uh, you have to battle to get through that road. You know, you have about, let me see, about maybe six petrol stations on a single road. You know, and then it begins to make you wonder, you know, yes, government is trying to, you know, restrict the period between when people can buy fuel, you know, petrol on major roads. But in, in, in terms of the planning, in terms of the, uh, the, the master plan of Lagos State, how do you have six or eight petrol stations on one road. In Lagos, I'm talking about Awolowo Road in Ikoi. You know, if you're coming from the third Milan Bridge axis, you'll see at least about two before you get to Kefi Junction. You cross Kefi Junction, you see total three. You see Mobile, four. Um, and they love them, about, about six, if not more. You know, so we're going to look at a top trending segment, the first one, but it shows that the government is complicit when it comes to, you know, some of these failures we're talking about. Is it is it uh, collapsed buildings we've been talking about? I, I saw I saw I mean our rundown this morning or yesterday. And I just got tired. Are you not tired of talking about fires at Balugo Market, Messi? Um, Are you, know, you know you're tired. It's like that again. <laughs> Are you not tired of talking about um, uh, collapsed buildings in Lagos? You know we're all tired. So. At some point, the government needs to be called out as well because they are the ones who give approvals for some of these things, and they also have to monitor as well. But let's let's go over to uh, Balogu Market to look at what um, what transpired there. Indeed, like I said, it's uh, it's another one that we have to talk about. Uh, a market fire, fire incident at the popular Balogu Market in Lagos Island uh, area of Lagos State. Um, the first that at one of the popular market buildings. If you look at this building, you would know um, that, you know, if you are familiar with the market, you know this building. Um, it started at, at that, that particular popular building on Thursday. Um, the cause of the fire could not be ascertained at the time we uh, were putting our report together. But um, operatives of the Legal Emergency Agency, um, I could see also the fire service, uh, they arrived at the scene and they responded to uh, a distress call concerning the fire incident and they got to the scene. I saw the videos and pictures of the fire service trucks and you know, emergency workers. Um, the permanent secretary of the legal state, 
emergency agency in the Lagos State. Um, yes, yes, emergency agency. La Sema, La Sema. He is a Dr. Olufemi Damilola uh, Oke Osayin Tolu. Um, he released a report titled Situation Report on the fire outbreak at the Broad Street, uh, Broad Street, Lagos Island. He said the agency responded to distress calls concerning the fire incident involving some shops on the ground uh, floor of a three-story building, quoting that statement. It says, quote, the cause of the fire cannot be ascertained as no casualty was involved, um, is what they, they said. All right, there were two fire service trucks, Lagos State uh, fire service trucks, um, two LRU fire trucks, and also we hear the police uh, were there at the time to work together to subdue the inferno. Um, it, is, it is sad. And of course, this is happening three months after the last fire at the same Malungu market with several goods worth millions of Naira lost up in flames, just like that. So just like you have mentioned that uh, you talked about whether or not we're not tired about fire incidents, talking about fire incidents, uh, in Lagos, fire incidents in Nigeria. I mean, because if, if we were not talking about Lagos State, then we'll probably be talking about, you know, another state, maybe Anambra, Imo, somewhere fire would, there would be an outbreak. And uh, it's really tiring, to be very honest. That's the word. But, you know, you begin to ask yourself, despite all of the fire incidents that we have recorded in Lagos, uh, in Lagos State and the markets. And this is just three months when there's also a fire incident in uh, the Balogun market, very popular one at that. One would think that we probably would have learned one or two stuff, uh, lessons to be precise. And what exactly are we doing with you know all of the mistakes? So it's okay, the spin fire incident over time, what have we done to ensure that we don't have a repeat? So it feels like let's just you know continue to be ready for you know fire incidents now governance is not just about getting elected and sitting back it's 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 a serious business and it's an issue of governance it's a governance issue to be very precise as much as yes i would not entirely say the people uh, do not have a role to play it's a combination of both and if you want to look at it in percentage then you begin to say 70 percent governors 30 percent the people but, you know, governance should lead the way. That's why you have government in place. So it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but it feels like this is what's going to happen every other time. Maybe we should just sit back, relax, and get ready for another fire incident for 2023. And maybe the next one would happen in, 20, you know, in February. Probably will happen in March. We never can tell when the next fire incident will happen. But this is not to sound as a prophet of doom. It's because we're not learning anything. We're not doing anything. After every experience, what are we doing to ensure that we don't have a repeat of it? And that's what people would say, you know, uh, being proactive. So how proactive are we being in the fight against fire? Now, I also, you know, looking at this particular report, there were also those who were victims of this. It's a good thing that no life was lost, but people look, have look lost goods. Look, look at, look at, uh, look at uh, Goods, it's properties raging, have been lost. I mean, a lot of persons have lost their, their properties in January at this time where, you know, it's difficult. So how do you even explain all of this? Now, one of the concerns that, you know, the victim of this fire incident was talking about was that it's also difficult for people. Everywhere looks too choked. We need to decongest. So even if you call the firefighters to come, I mean, just take a look at this building. We also hear that prayers happen every Thursday. What kind of prayers are we having? Do we sit back to educate ourselves? Look at that. Look at the wires. I mean, use your eye. If you've never been here, then you never understand. I've been here. You would want to pray to just get out of it. You know, so it's just a disaster waiting to happen. That's what it is. So what exactly is the essence of having a government? It's not okay to contest an election and every election year, just like this one, where you're saying, oh, vote me back. I'll do X, Y, Z, and I'll do all of that. Life is becoming very difficult for people. It feels like we have gone back to the Stone Age where we had no government and no control. And so look, just, just take a look at this. It's quite unfortunate. And there's no way we're not going to have another fire incident in Balogu Market until we sit back. Yes, it was okay that you had, you know, response. Uh, the, there was a combination of uh, uh, effort from the, the, the last Mar firefighters and what have you, you know, to put out the fire. But how, how do you explain these? It's, 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 it's really unfortunate. And we can't continue like this. My point is, what can we do to stop the fire? So, yes, there's a Ministry of Information in every state. 
and orientation. Uh, the firefighters do not just exist for fighting fire. They also exist because they can also ensure that this fire does not happen in the first place. So where is the place of education informing the people? We need to know what do we do to prevent this fire? And the situation already doesn't look like fire is not going to happen. So if you say if it's, a, it's an arson, what have we done to ensure that that doesn't happen? So we're in circle. We'll continue to go through the circle. I'm going to have another fire incident. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm not even a, a prophet. But it's what's going to happen because if you look at the pattern and our behavior, you can predict what the outcome will be. And really, it, we can't continue like this. So yes, this is a, a wake-up call to the Lagos State government. This is a wake-up call to Nigeria. This is a wake-up call to everybody. We have to, you know, all hands must be on deck. We have to put our acts together to ensure that we can't continue to do the same thing and expect that there'll be a different result, right? There, should, there are some practices, there are some things that we should do. We should be hearing messages in different languages, behaviors. These markets and all of the prayers that you have on Thursday, when you gather, you also should be, begin to educate yourself on what to do and what not to do. And looking at the structure entirely is not even encouraging. There would be, you know, power surge and what have you. So that, that's exactly what we're dealing with. And it's not pleasant. But we need to move away from that. We hope that we learn our lessons. Uh, uh, before we go on, I was just waiting for you to learn so I could say a few things. After my intro, um, I, I, I think it's, um, uh, you know, pointed out to something earlier, which is the fact that um, on a world war road, for instance, you have this traffic situation, right? Because you have so many petrol stations. Um, if anything goes bust, you know, they will be sealed off. Um, but somebody somewhere in a government office gave approval for, for this, these petrol stations to be cited. And that's where, you know, government now becomes complicit in, in some of these um, uh, things, you know, in terms of regulatory uh, 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 regulations. Uh, the, the, the last time we talked about the J. Randall Cultural Center, or Center for Yoruba Culture and Arts or History, um, I, I mentioned something about, you know, Lagos Island, the Central Business District of Lagos, the CBD. Each time, Mercy, I go to um, this Balogu market, uh, each time I go there, I feel sad. I feel sad because I, I try to imagine what the place was like in, in maybe the, the 80s, for instance, okay? Maybe the 70s. And you realize that that is the central business. Look at Broad Street. Anywhere where the British colonized, if you hear Broad Street, Broad Street is the financial center. A number of African capitals when you go there you see they have broad street broad street is supposed to be a, a sort of if, if a a hub you know so buildings that were used for financial services banks insurance companies government buildings have been turned into markets lagos island has become the haven of aguero and all the corporate entities have run to victoria island where we are which is not meant to be uh, a business district is residential area. Look at the houses around you. They've run to Lekki, which is also meant to be a residential area. So you have skyscrapers popping up on Victoria Island. And, and, and um, what we're saying is that the, the government of Lagos State needs to restore Lagos Island to its, its lost glory. That's the central business district of Lagos, you know. And, and he talked about the place being choked. You go to the Balogun market today, you can't even make a phone call because of the way it's choked. We look at Akbonbon Bridge, which is something we're all suffering from now because that is a bridge, one, the second bridge linking the mainland to the island. So if you're not going to use the third mainland bridge, you use the Akbonbon Bridge. Today, it's being renovated or repaired. At the end of the day, uh, it's being repaired because of a fire incident that affected the, the bridge. Why? Because people are selling them. Mercy, I had opportunities before the fire, I think after the fire, I can't remember, to go through that route. And there are markets, people built shops under the flyover, choked and stuck together, you know. Um, government needs to also consider really not just, you know, uh, 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 buying trains and all that, but also building markets. Also, well, building markets. It's very important. The final thing I want to say, because it's very important, is that the reason we're seeing these things continue, we know. It's because they, there's money to be made. See all those shops that you're saying are choked? Huh? Mercy? You see all those, all those buildings you saw? They collect money from them. 
they, they make money goes to government through, you know, Agbero or some other kind of uh, tax collectors. And that's why they're not doing anything. Now, they need to invest money in building proper markets. Get these people out to a proper place and restore Lagos Island. That's what I'll say on this. Yeah. Well, um, so just quickly, another one. It's also not very uh, fantastic to talk about. Uh, that would be the word. But uh, I also find that as an irony. But it's also interesting. Uh, it's the fact that Lagos State Police Command had arraigned three women for engaging in a public fight that resulted in one of them sustaining injury around the Oshodi area of uh, Lagos State. Okay, so um, uh, apparently these ladies were, they, they are quite young and uh, uh, probably when they were arraigned in court, uh, the charge was read that the defendant on January, they were found on the 22nd, to be precise, of January 2023, around 12.30 p.m. on, uh, you know, Imam Street's Oshodi in Lagos. That's in Ikeja Magistrate District. Uh, they said that they engage in a serious public fight, thereby committing an offense that is contrary and punishable under Section 54 of the Criminal Laws of Lagos State of Nigeria of 2015. And uh, afterwards, uh, you know, <laughs> the defendant happy. pleaded guilty. <laughs> the defendant pleaded not guilty, that's it, uh, to the charge. Three ladies, these ladies are in their, you know, let's say 24, 25 and all of that. So they are, let's say, uh, mid-20s. That would be the word, mid-20s. They were eventually granted uh, bail in the sum of 50,000 naira each with two shorties. Uh, the case was adjoined till February. 2023, the third to be precise, just for mention. And that's what it is. So I, I find it very. Um, I, 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 I find I, I, I that very. Ami Mat, Shukura, <laughs> and Jumoke is there to fight. Uh, it's interesting <laughs> that uh, the one, I don't know, one of them must have been the one who was injured. So they also arranged the one who was injured before court. For what? You know, if the one who was injured should be the one who it should be, is a victim, right? So I'll be. I'm curious to know why they. I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a lawyer now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I mean, if if maybe there's a fight and someone wounds you, the person who injures you, you had a victim. So you should be in the hospital, not before a court. You know, while the person, who, the people who did the injuring, should be the ones answering. But if the person who was injured, also injured uh, the others, then or, that's or, fine. What if it was a, a co <laughs> you know because a collateral damage? Yeah. Yeah. Because so what 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 we hear. Um, three men were engaged in, like you said, a public fight, and one of them sustained an injury in Oshodi. You know, Oshodi is where you can see <laughs> a lot of these rough people. I don't know if they are part of those bad uh, but if one of them was injured, why did they make her go to court now? And she also being charged or accused of something. But you know, you yeah, know it's, it's the fact that they were fighting. You, you didn't get the part that. But it's, one it's, of them was the injured, right? So, so the point is, the fact that all of them were, um, you know, involved in a fight, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. against the law. Yeah. If you look at the criminal code in Lagos, it's against it. Mm -hmm. But for me, what's actually screaming in my ears and making me, you know, wonder and almost laugh at the same point is that, wait, wait, why don't we have a lot of people in prison? Because and you see people fighting everywhere. Because do you know the fight that goes on on, on the streets of Lagos? You know, today? you remember the... So you probably... No, yeah. I, I need to cite an example for you. Yeah, so yeah. If, if you get to patronize uh, public transport, you see a lot. For instance, the Kurukbe, those white buses, that's what they call them. Kurukbe. <laughs> Kurukbe. Yes, especially on the island. I mean, what you have on the mainland is quite different from what you have on the so island. Who? So, no, it's not like that. So these buses are just, you know, <laughs> they're very petite and what have you. And you probably... Those are the mini, the mini buses. The right? mini buses. Mm, mm. And so on the way, you find out that some people... You know, some guys will stand on the road. I'm sure these are the people you call the ag bearers. But what they do is they stop, they stop these buses, and then they're asking for, uh, uh, should I even begin to yeah, say you get, Yeah, dramatize it for us. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, uh, fumio, uh, fumio, uh, the guy will not be like, you know, what do you mean? <laughs> say, hey, give me your money, Joe. Are you joking? You know, kill my worry. You know, before you know, they are breaking something. They are removing. You understand? Hey. I, I have seen a situation where the bus, the driver of a mini bus, right? The the person who's on steering, he packed the bus. Came out. He got down. Remove his shirt. <laughs> so me, I'm wondering where the Nigerian police was. Why? Because you know, a lot of people should be. If that's a crime, then we haven't been acting properly. We, yeah, we, 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 we also need to wonder where they were when those uh, <laughs> at um, 
Uh, where is that part of Lagos State? Those ones that were fighting under one bridge, remember? I don't remember uh, that. Uh, 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 I forgot was the name. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it was all over. And the police stood by. There was the video, the picture people put on, on Twitter. You know, they, was, they stood by and were watching them. You know, they brought out cutlasses, they brought out bottles to fight themselves. You know, brought out uh, uh, wooden buttons and all that to fight themselves. And the police were in the picture, standing by. You know, they should, they should go after those ones first. And let the women, you know, rest a bit. They should go after those ones. Those are the main ones. Those ones disturb public peace more, you know, than these women. But, um, you know, I in some parts of the world, they, they use sort of like exercise some discretion in policing to say, okay, some of these things we may not need to waste the time or the resources of state, you know, to, uh, to take it to court because we'll just look at a way of settling it amicably and then we ask you guys go. So I'm wondering if this fight between these three women was one that could not have been settled, you know, in the police station or out of court. But anyway, we have to move on. The last one we'll touch on very quickly. Uh, it, it may make you laugh, <laughs> but this is a true story. And it's not a new story as far as, uh, uh, you know, some of the trending stories we've been talking about are concerned. When uh, the National Assembly or a court uh, declares an important uh, person, uh, a, a person of a national importance or public interest, a VIP wanted. Um, we've had the inspection of police being declared wanted before, um, uh, customs head being summoned by the National Assembly. This time, uh, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, Right Honorable Femi Bajabia Mila, has threatened an arrest warrant against uh, Gordon Emefiele and uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria governor and, of course, uh, MDs of, of banks. Um, that's what he's saying. He is threatened to issue an arrest warrant uh, against the uh, central bank governor and the MD of any bank, managing director that is, uh, who fails to honor the invitation of the House in respect of a deadline for the face out of the old Naira notes, 1,500 and 200. Don't forget when Femi, uh, when the House of Reps invited the uh, CBN governor, he, he was said to be ab abroad, attending to his health, you know, and uh, they sent uh, one of his um, aides, so his deputies, a lady from the central bank. Initially, the uh, reps re resisted it, but later um, they accepted and listened to her. So, uh, Baja Biamila has had to reissue this threat because the man is, has been back and he's been, you know, making appearances here and there. Uh, he's been to see President Buhari, I think, twice at Asarok Villa. Um, so, they're wondering why he has not come to see them. Uh, he issued the threat at, on Thursday at the plenary uh, while reacting to a letter uh, from Emefiele, it's a the second letter he's written to them, informing the House of its inability or his inability to honor the invitation uh, to appear before the ad hoc committee set up by the House to interface with the um, Central Bank of Nigeria over this this issue. Um, so he's everywhere, but he's saying I can't, I can't, I can't come see you. That's uh, that's what we see. So, so but on the other hand, uh, if you look at the excuse, I mean, he's given an excuse. Should he be valid? Should he be honoured? What are the circumstances uh, surrounding, uh, you know, the fact that you can be available to answer? Right? Have we had incidences of where people have not responded? I mean, it's not like he totally ignored. I'm not holding brief for, you know, Godwin and Mephili right here. But the, the, on the other hand, it's what Nigerians are talking about is a threat from Bajabia Miller. Is he uh, a police officer? What exactly is the crime? What, right what, what is Femi, uh, what, what is Mephili afraid of? I mean, because at the end of the day, you're in Abuja. You've seen the president twice. You first went there with an, with a, in a delegation. After that, you went to see the president on your own. Then you, you, you've held meetings, for instance, the MPC, all right? You then address the press, and you say there's no going back. The distance from the CBN to the 3M zone is not quite far, if you know Abuja. All right, so what's the problem? You know, he's given reasons. He says, I can't appear. We know the reasons. But how long will it take to go to the House? This is the House of Representatives. It's, 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 it's um, a slight on the entire Nigerian. You know, because the House of Representatives, if you look at the Senate and the House, are even closest to the people. No, so but but so I so think this is this is this the is the representatives very, this, this, of, this of, is the, of the Nigerian people have said, come and answer 
some questions on behalf of Nigerians. So, so this is a very dicey issue and uh, some people have started painting out the picture that you want to begin to classify that as conspiracy. But we're really out of time and that's because we have to, you know, move on to the next segment which is uh, off the press. We call it off the press and our guest is already on standby. We need to go. I'm sure we would have more time to talk about, you know, whether or not a Mephili. Do we still have time for a Mephili to answer? Uh, all we know that is on the 31st, the old note will no longer be valid. Right. Well, we'll take a break when we return. It'll be time for us to go through our papers this morning. We call it off the press. G.D. Johnson is on standby. He joins us. <laughs>